Now then, here we are, me and Mutt in the glorious Lake District on a pretty fine day, although it has chucked it down with rain a couple of times. And I am joined today with Sai, who is one of my Patreons. So we just sort of had a bit of chat and then ended up coming out for a night out and hopefully going to camp on the top of Bowfell. And Bowfell's a big, massive rock, so there ain't much sort of flat section on top, but hopefully we'll find somewhere. I hope so. He's been up plenty of times, I've been over a couple of times, but I've never really paid attention to uh, pitches, so anyway, we'll sort it out, mate, won't we? We'll sort it out. So from here, we're going to head up over Crinkle Crags, which is just around here. Into all this mountainous area here, which is just absolutely beautiful. We've got the Coniston Fells over here. And the far end of that is the old man of Coniston, which uh, I did a camp on not that long ago. Check that video out because it's pretty cool. And uh, we've set off from uh, Rhinos Pass, so we already started at about 350 meters. And from here, as I say, we're going to get up to the top of Bowfell, which is, I'm going to guess, on 800 and. Do you know it? 902, is it? 902. He knows better than me. <laughs> he really does. So yeah, I was thinking 876, but no, 902, he does know. He is a legend of these areas and he's been out a million times in all these fells and it is a pleasure coming out with someone who is uh, as experienced as he is. Anyway, let's bash on. Well, the sunshine is just pouring down on us and because we are going up <laughs> a fair steep climb now, it is getting warm, so got to take this top off. But I mean, just look around here, it's just incredible. And all these little jutty out sections just from this angle are incredible and the sun just allows them to sort of highlight. And that pike of stickle over there just looks fantastic. That's Harrison stickle. And um, what's this one again? Pike of Blisco. Pike of yeah, but from this angle it looks pretty naff, just a little round mound. Now but a uh, molehill, but usually from all the other sort of angles this is really stands out, really sort of prominent, but this is the lakes on a sunny day. Fantastic, eh? Anyway, I need to get this top off. And first of all though, look at this. We've got uh, a leg leg difference here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a runner's leg and this is somebody who can Carry me off a mountain if I need it. <laughs> I don't know whether I'll be able to carry you off though, mate. I don't, I don't think so. No. I'll Not be, even Blue could help you with that, I don't think. <laughs> I'll be dragging you, I will. <laughs> All these layers of mountains look awesome, don't they? Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Oh. So this is the start of Crinkle Crag Crags then. Yeah. Onto that top section up there. And on we go. That's incredible that. <laughs> Isn't that just unbelievable? Anyway, it's making my lungs work going up here. <laughs> It is pretty steep and I've got quite a big backpack on because I think I'm out for two days now really. So I've got food for two days and just those few little extras that you might need. Keep you safe for that length of time. Well, with these clouds, these silver linings. Yep, I just feel blessed. Blessed to be up here. And if you look down at the river there, meandering down, the sun just sort of making it glint. And that's a uh, great boss. And I've never seen it from this angle. Beautiful. that 
This is the uh, bad step, which is a, a little bit of a steep scramble, we'll call it. But with a dog, we're just going to take the uh, track that goes round the side to the highest point of Crinkle Crags. Safety first and all that. Well, I'm already enjoying this one. Fantastic. It's a spot on route up. It's an absolute pleasure on a day like this. Oh, it. Just look at this, well, the sun just sort of beaming down here and then come around this side and just <laughs> dramatic, that is the word. Massive like outcrops of rock just everywhere. Yeah, stunning place. It is a very nice walk this one. I say walk, there's a bit of scrambling. It's not the easiest to do, so if you come this way over crinkled crags, just make sure that you are steady on your feet and you feel competent in doing this sort of thing. It's pretty much everywhere. It's just rock. And these rocks get bigger, look at that. Steady away though. There's no rush but to stay on this planet a bit longer. Because it is beautiful. It is beautiful here. And we're very lucky that we get a chance to look, <laughs> experience that. Just wow. And here comes the sunshine. It's funny because dog just waits for us all the time. Right, it's right. like, it's yeah. now for him. Right, he'll just pop down here, no problem with that. <laughs> It's not a good shot that is it, because uh, it makes my legs look even skinnier. <laughs> Especially when I'm out with someone with tree trunk legs over here. <laughs> who can literally, he could actually hold the house up, this fella. <laughs> so we've just come down this rocky section here, and that <laughs> is quite technical, is that? Definitely have to watch your ankles, because it's quite sort of a sharp rock as you come down. But look at the clouds just showing the shadows on some of this, but it's just, yeah, amazing. And we are heading to the top of Bow Fell, which is just showing itself there, that point in the middle there. Yeah, awesome eh mate? Yeah, superb. Absolutely awesome. Absolutely loving it. Never get tired of it. No. I have got a couple of beers. Yeah, exactly. So we'll have a beer later on. Never get tired of that, anyway. <laughs> it looks like you've had a few more than me, mate, in your yeah. time. <laughs> Pure bliss. Look at that. We're currently at three tarns and we've just come off the back of Crinkle Crags and then uh, this all sort of sits here. But yeah, just again, the perfect evening. This is Bowfell here in the background and you can just sort of see all the striations of rock there. Just stunning. Well, we've just been stood by the tarn there and the wind coming over the top has it's pretty strong like. So we were going to head to the top of Bowfell, which is up this one, but we've decided, because we found the most perfect pitch, and uh, it's just uh, just in between the two, Crinkle Crags at this side and Bowfell at this side, but just look at this grass. I just said it's like bloody Wimbledon, this. Absolutely perfect. It is better than my lawn at home. <laughs> it's definitely better than mine. <laughs> yeah. So it's only small, but I think I'll be able to get my tent in here and uh, this side where it's a bit sort of flatter and a bigger sort of section for his tent. I think we'll manage fine there, mate. I think so. So there we go. This is it. This is going to be home. So what we'll do is dump the bags and I'm just going to have a quick wander over here because it looks like there might be a couple of other places and uh, just check it out just before we do actually start pitching. What do you say, Blue? Do you like it? Yeah. But yeah, it's just out of the wind, that's the main thing. Absolutely awesome. 
Yep, this is definitely it. We've had a skeg about as well. There's a couple of other places to pitch, but this is just, it's amazing. We're playing balls later, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get these tents up. Can't remember where it is in this bag. What tent you rocking? Nature hike, Cloud Peak 2. He's got a Cloud Peak 2, and I've got the Starlight 1 by Terra Nova again. I say again because I've really enjoyed using this over summer. Nice lightweight, small tent. Perfect for pitching places That's like this where it's quite tent. small. Well, I'm just going to nip to the fridge. We've got our sort of beers waiting and cooling. So let's go find somewhere nice to chill out. Absolutely spoilt for choice of where to sit here. There's just so many beautiful views from all angles. So <sighs> yeah, just looking down this way is just incredible. Looking back towards the sunshine there, just incredible. You know, all the way back up here, all these rocks everywhere. Yeah, awesome. Anyway, here we are. Me and Sai from uh, my Patreon. And uh, I've chatted to Sai quite a bit in messages over the last sort of year or so. And uh, yeah, you're a sound fella. He knows his stuff. He's been in the mountains a lot. He lives near the uh, lakes anyway, so he's here pretty much all the time. And you know if you point something out to him a mountain somewhere he knows what it is so <laughs> yeah wealth of knowledge mate it's nice coming out with you i fell in the m geek i think that's yeah. it <laughs> yeah that's it yeah <laughs> anyway we have got a beer what have you got thatcher's here's cloudy somerset oh. cider he thought it was going to be warm you see but we're sat here freezing <laughs> so this is a north brewing co barrel aged smoked st smoked stout nine percent Look at that though, looks nice doesn't it? 9% nice, nice cans They are nice and they've uh, got to feel it You know, so when you're drunk you're not well, letting eh? them slip through your hand <laughs> <laughs> Anyway Barrel aged, smoked, stout Cheers pal Cheers bud, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting you and, It's been uh, awesome Getting out yeah. on the camp yeah Let's have a taste and, of that And you've found, you've oh, found the so best bad. pitch ever <laughs> I'll tell you what, well, I've never seen grass like it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh. Honestly, it's like we're in the middle of a bowling green. We've got the mini great slab next to us. <laughs> yeah, well that's it, all this. It's just stunning all the way around, so. Yeah, we're looking at the sun just setting there behind, uh, where are we? Oh, that's Scarfell. Yeah. Scarfell Pike, innit? Yeah. You can see It'll Summit Shelter right, just right on top. Right in the, um, in the broad crag call there, the brightness now. Yeah. Beautiful, eh? Looks that look, does look amazing tonight, doesn't it? But it's always moments like this, you just feel lucky to be out here and just to have a body that can get you to these places and just enjoy it all, so. This is the reason I do it. Yeah. I'm pleased you uh, inspired me to get out and start camping, because this is the reason why I do it. What, the these camping nights, side of it? Yeah. Absolutely, You've yeah. always been out and done... Always been out walking, always been on the fells and stuff, but um, I would I would never have camped if I hadn't started watching your videos. No so, go then, mate, yes. Yeah, and uh, give us the, the little push to go and do it and have a go at it. The thing and, is... And uh, I've never looked back. I'd say 80% of it is just getting yourself out there. And if you're doing that anyway, mm. you know, the last little bit, as you say, just a little push, just get a tent and sort yourself out. So. Collect the gear. You know, I took, I, I spent that winter after I'd first watched your videos and chatted to you a little bit on messages and then just spent the winter gathering bits and bobs, you know, a little bit at a time, a yeah. tent and sleeping bag and a pad and, and then lo looking at thousands of reviews online about which is the best one to use. Yeah. <laughs> None of which are any good until you go out and try them yourself. No, absolutely. Yeah. That's nice to know though, mate. You know what I mean? I'm glad that, nah. you know, helping people get out and just, just enjoy it all. Definitely, I, I, yeah. I would put money on that I'm not the only one. <laughs> I've had a few messages like, yeah. definitely. No, it's, it's good. 
I, I love, I love, and this is what inspires me, to know that I'm inspiring other people. Yeah. So I'm getting like a feedback and I get feedback from people like yourself yeah. and it just makes me feel that I want to do more, you know, keep sort of going with it. And It's what life's all about, isn't it? At the end of the yeah. day, you, 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 you do stuff to feel good about yourself. This makes you feel good about yourself because the exercise is great. Um, the outdoors part of it, being a little bit more at one with nature, which is what we should be doing. Um, so you that, get that's it. That's the part you, I you enjoy. You totally get it. Um, <coughs> yeah, I, that's the part I really enjoy because I, I think uh, we've we, we are going backwards for the most part as people on that front and becoming. Uh, House, it's, house people and in indoor people. Screens as well. Yeah, it's screens, just, it yeah. It pulls you inside rather than letting you be free. Like running around as kids. Like, my kids don't run around like nah, we did. No, nah. I, I bet. I bet they haven't covered I'd be frightened. My, I'd be frightened if Maxwell done some of the stuff that I did, <laughs> well, to be fair. But... Yeah, that is true. <laughs> still here, though. <laughs> I know, still here, I don't right? know how. I don't know how I've made it this far. I know. Yeah. Boys are definitely different. Yeah, you know, that's it. <laughs> but that's the thing, like, on bikes and stuff as kids, BMXs, we've just went absolutely everywhere. Yeah. And, um, like, I was just about to say, though, my lad will have probably covered about not even a tenth the distance yeah. of what I've covered in my life, you know, at that age. Yeah, at that age. Because we were just out and about everywhere. Yeah. So... You basically came in from school, got changed and went back out. Yeah, no, definitely. And you didn't come back in until it was time to go to bed yeah. or you were famished. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Come back for some food. That was pretty much it. Yeah. Look how clear the um, the summit can is on Scorfell Pike there. It looks huge, doesn't it? From <laughs> it does, here? yeah. And I've camped on top of that. I know. I can't, I can't believe <laughs> I know. You, yeah, you could, I can't you could, believe that one. From here, you could probably see my tent in this light, wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, that was a good one, like, when you camped on there. Yeah, I made it work. I don't know how, but... <laughs> I've been on there about 50 or 60 times and I've yet to work out how you managed to put a tent on it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. All right, this, this area takes a bit of beating as well, the Langdales. I mean, it's why it gets so many visitors and um, there's so much, so much varied walking in this area as well and hiking. Well, I, I've never done this from uh, where we've set off over yeah. Crinkle Crags to this point. I've done all this uh, and then you must go down here, do we? Yeah. That's... Because last time I did this, it was in dark with my mates. Yeah, and you We did that down there. ten peak challenge um, in the rain all day, and uh, this was the last peak, both fell. And it was proper rain. It was <laughs> proper rain all day, and yeah. So from this point on, though, you you drop down the band. Down the band, yeah. Oh, and that is just awful. When your legs are tired and you've had a day like that, honestly, we were just knackered. Yeah, dreaming of it being over at that point. <laughs> This is a first for me up here. I haven't. Um, I've camped on Esk Pike. Well, Esk Pike easy walk. is at the bottom of Esk Pike. Uh, what is it? Summit House. Esk House. Yeah, that's yeah. Where you... So that's where I did my camp in the snow, and that was wild. That was that was <laughs> epic. That one. That was mental. Yeah, literally trapped for D two, digging two your, nights. Digging yourself out. <laughs> yeah, a snow shovel was a necessity for that night, and I didn't have one with me. I, I didn't think that a video of someone being in a tent for two days could be so enjoyable but it was <laughs> it was it was brilliant yeah but that's just you're enjoying the the torture of someone yeah, else yeah i know yeah. <laughs> the sadistic side I of know, things that's, that's what it is i think that's what most people watch these sort of storm videos for because yeah. they like watching other people suffer so. i think there's definitely something in that i mean it's human <laughs> nature isn't it that people yeah. do like to otherwise you wouldn't watch people wouldn't watch some of the stuff they watch on tv if they didn't enjoy uh, watching people suffer. That's true, yeah. But I, I loved when you were getting out as well of the tent. Um, no, you, you know you couldn't go that far for most of it, but even Blue was having a great time out he in the snow. He loves the snow, yeah. loves it. He was just having the best time ever, weren't you, Blue? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who I'm more uh, starstruck by, Blue. You <laughs> or Alan? I think it's Blue. <laughs> this is the thing, like, I get so many messages who just, like, they just sort of basically say they watch the channel for blue. Oh, oh. <laughs> and uh, I just sort of always say, it's like, I'm literally just a camera man for a dog. He's, he's <laughs> awesome, the dog. Yeah. You're so, so good, aren't you? It's my first time walking with you today, and you've just walked, you've, you've led the way. 
It's yeah, supposed to be me that knows the fells. This it's fell. so easy though, isn't it? Because like, literally, I ain't given him one command. No, not a single. Just not a he single just thing. Always walks 20 yards to 100 yards ahead of us and waits when we're flagging. <laughs> I, d I didn't need my Garmin watch because he just walked up the path all the way. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. He, he always goes the way you need to go. It was it was impressive that today. But it's cold though. It is. Uh, I can feel my hands now. I've just slipped my gloves on, but I am going to get mine out there in, in a bit. I'll it's tell you what, this beer's nice. Do you yeah. like stout? I like a stout, yeah. Tastes that, although it'll taste a bit horrible after that, but. Oh, it's nice, that. <laughs> I've got to say, <laughs> I, I'm nice. actually really enjoying it. Smoked as well. Yeah, because for yeah. me, I, I prefer like an IPA. Mm. But this, um, yeah, it's going down really well quite happy with it well when I was getting these before I was looking mm. uh, there's the where I play golf they have a drink called Beaver Town and that's an IPA and there was some of them cans the smaller ones which I usually bring camping as well because yeah. they, they weigh a little bit less as well <coughs> uh, I was gonna get them and I thought no it's summer I'll have a cider and it's this is it's not summer, it's absolutely is it, mate? This, honestly, <laughs> this is like winter camping tonight. It is honestly freezing, isn't it? It, it is cold. It's cold. I'm just pleased you found that uh, pitch because we're going to be out of the wind. And, yeah. Because it oh, would have definitely. been freezing up there in the wind. Been very cold. Yeah. I mean, I can feel now. I mean, insulated jacket. It's working fine, but the legs a little bit chilly. Yeah. I'll, I'll be warmer because I've got a little bit more meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I reckon your calf muscles are four times the size of mine. <laughs> Honestly. Hello, bro. You Hello. should have carried my bag, mate. I could have. And me. It would have been no problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Piggyback. <laughs> That's why I don't really fuss about uh, lightweight gear because... I've got to drag 100 kilos of myself up the fell, so... Yeah, is that what you wear? About 100 kilos? About 100 kilos, yeah, so... I think I'm... Another 15 in 70, the bag doesn't 75, make. I think I am. <laughs> at the minute, 74 maybe. And to be fair, I've, I've fluctuated up and down over the years in weight. When I was cycling, I was down to about 90. Um, but I've been up by 120. Really? Yeah, as well. Wow. Which was too big for me. Yeah, yeah. Far too big for me. The thing me. is, though, you getting out and exercising, doing all this, you, the, you know, it keeps you in level, it doesn't it? means I can Please. eat and drink what I want and uh, I don't really get any bigger. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we've come round other side of this rock just because it's cold. <laughs> it is a chilly one. <laughs> that wind is just... Yeah. I'm glad I brought some gloves. I nearly didn't put these in. I mean, now, it did say overnight it's going to get dropped to 9 degrees, but that was down in valley bottom, so... I think it's about 2 or 3 up here overnight. <laughs> to say this is middle of summer, that's mad, isn't it? Yeah, getting quite close to freezing, um, yeah. I on, mean, on I, a nice day as well. I can, yeah, exactly. I can feel it now, like. Yeah. And Well, they always say, um, general rule of thumb is every 100 metres that you go up, you lose about a degree. One degree, yeah. Yeah, so that, that would be about right for today. You know, back down in the valley now, you could probably be sitting out now and it would still be quite all right if you were out of the wind. Just thinking what we're at now. If that's uh, 900... It would be what? about 8.50, I would think, now. Maybe, uh, yeah. 8.30, maybe, because the highest crinkles, 8.60, I think. All right. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be 800. It'll we'll be about 800 here now, would say. Yeah. Cold. <laughs> That's what it is. Bloody cold. <laughs> you alright once you get some warm food, didn't you? Yeah, what have you got to eat tonight? I think I've just got one of those um, all-day breakfasts, a wayfarer. That was all I had left in my box. Because <laughs> I was on nights last night, I didn't get time this morning to go and get... I was just going to go and get one of those uh, dehydrated meals, like a chicken tikka or something like that. Um, yeah. But there's an all-day breakfast. You're going to be well jealous of me then. I've also got um, a pie from the local pie shop as well, Gosforth Bakery. Right. You, that's your jealousy, absolutely your, awesome. Your jealousy has just actually <laughs> dropped a little bit there because um, I've got like a homemade um, chilli con carne oh. and I froze it and then uh, obviously I've just brought it up frozen so at least it's, because I thought it was going to be a lot warmer. Yeah. I'm hoping it's defrosted enough to cook but um, yeah I'm just going to bang that chilli on with a bit of rice. Where's it at? But uh, yeah. A nice pie. Especially, you, you know where you've got a beer? Yeah. Pie sounds good. I'll yeah. tell you what, 
nine percent, I can bloody feel that beer. You will be able I'm to. I'm getting to the bo bottom of that now. You'll be you'll be a decent fettle after you've had a couple of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's You've got one of mine to drink as well. All oh, right. <laughs> it's a bit different side of me, you see. <laughs> Don't think I'm like all about uh, the off camera fitness. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all about fitness and getting out and enjoying life and stuff. And then, yeah, drunk Al, different different person. This this is part of enjoying life. <laughs> well, you the know, fitness allows you to do, allows you to have yeah. a little bit of off time. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's what it's all about, isn't it? It is. Yeah, you've got to just sort of balance it all out. Yeah. There's no point getting uh, stuck down one path and not experiencing other paths. Nah, you can't get too hung up on um, on things in life. You just enjoy everything, enjoy every part of it. It's one big uh, one big bag of fun is life, so you should try and enjoy every single part of it. Yep. Go on, go on, blow. Yeah, the thing is though, like channel-wise, <coughs> for me. You know, like you're sort of saying about inspiration and yeah. getting inspired by something like this. But like, um, as far as a part of life, I'm trying to push a part of life that a lot of people are losing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to bring that back and sort of say, get yourselves outside, enjoy what this is. You know what I mean? Because today, in today's society, yeah. we're not going to the local pie shop. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're, we we're getting like stuff brought to our houses. We're getting dominoes you know, delivered. Everything and... is kept keeping us in our houses and entertainment's there and you don't really need to do anything. You know, you don't need to leave. So, you know, this is what I'm sort of saying. It's like, get out and just... We're not enjoying life. As a society, this, we're not enjoying life in the way that we're supposed to be doing it. That, that we've been doing it for the, the whole of existence <laughs> of humans, basically. It's not a good thing because what's happening is more people are sort of suffering with, um, you know, mental health and things. And I think it's a massive part of it to do with mental health is the fact that we are sitting inside. Yeah. We're not getting out and just being present in nature. Well, I... Come, yeah, you, totally. You, you're preaching to the choir here with me because <laughs> I... Uh, I tell everyone I, I work in the NHS and uh, so we experience the the mental health ec epidemic that we've got going at the moment with especially young people. And to be fair, I would encourage all of my work colleagues, I encourage every young person to get out and do this. I mean, if, if, you, go, if you come out and do this and this doesn't improve your mental health, well then there's some deeper issues that need resolved <laughs> absolutely because this this is good for every single part of you your fitness mentally it's and good physically, for your fitness yeah, completely that mentally it's so soothing being up here in the in the outdoors seeing the views seeing everything you know seeing i, I just love watching I, I love coming up and seeing where the sheep live <laughs> you know we, we were on the way up crinkle crags there before yeah. and that one was just sat on that little ledge on the side of a crag on its own, that just happily anything. eating some grass. Exactly that. That's me. That's you think that's absolutely that, awesome. That's me, just out on its own, you know, away from society and just sort of thinking, do you know what? I'll, this I own all this. Get yourself outside. It is gonna make a difference to your life. And, and you, you don't have to do this. You don't no. have to come up to the middle of bloody crinkled crags. No, just get crags out, get out for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just exactly that. Get out for a walk. Go sit on a bench that's just in your local park and just sit and feel it all. Whatever it is. Watch the world go by. Totally. Experience some things other than being in the house. That's that's it. You know, we, ha yeah. we haven't evolved as people to, to be <coughs> sat in a house. Um, Come here. Consuming hours and hours and hours of social media and mostly crap on the TV. Um, some yeah. good stuff on YouTube, mind. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm trying to give you like at least half an hour a week. Yeah, that's my aim. Go away then, Blue. Go on. Yeah, he's non-stop that lad. Yeah. I wish I had a quarter of his energy. No, I I totally agree with you, and that's that's part of why I like I like the message that you're putting out <clears throat> is because every video is generally about the positive side of, of getting out 
exploring what you can do, what we can do as people. Because I, I was a personal trainer for quite a few years, did a sports science degree, know my stuff about physical exercise, and because the fact that I was... <laughs> Blue, give up. Go on. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> right, lie down. But yeah, because um, I have always pushed myself to the limits when it comes to exercise, because I've been a fell runner yeah. as a kid. I used to do a fell race every week, mm -hmm. and... I wanted to win, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. I push my body to the limit. So like, I know that pretty much everyone out there can do more than what they're doing now. Yeah. Well, as a personal trainer, pardon my French, but I was a bit of an asshole because yeah. like, I knew that that person, my client could do more than what they thought they could do. Yeah. So I would push them a bit harder. And they, they, they actually loved it. They yeah. got to the point where they were like, realizing that their capacity from thinking they were like 60 percent of what they're capable yeah. of suddenly grew to sort of 80 90 percent because yeah. i was pushing them more with it and then they felt better because of it yeah and it's the same thing getting out and just enjoying this sort of stuff exploring what you can do exactly that we can all do more i've it always believed and um and like you've been with me today and i'm quite a big guy i shouldn't really be able to do 30 mile fell walks but I do because you just get your head down and get on with it and I've always been a total believer of your body will do whatever your mind tells it to pretty and much if, yeah if, you, if your mind's telling your body that you can't do it then you won't do it that's the word if, you, if your mind is telling your body if you can quieten your mind down enough of all the negativity and just keep yeah. positive thoughts and say I can do this I, I can smash this your body will do it our bodies can do way more than anything there uh, than, than we can ever imagine. This guy, he, yeah, that, that's exactly the message. It is. Totally. We're here, we're out in all this. We're sat here, there's no one else here. There's actually a tent pitched over there, which is <laughs> some random guy. But where was he from? He was like, he foreign. It sounded like he might have been... Um, he might have been New Zealand or maybe even South African. South but African. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah, walked a long way to get here. <laughs> <laughs> he just, yeah. He had a good washing line out. He did, he yeah. He had some pally yeah, gear. Been, he must have been out at least three months living oh, here. He's, he's been here yeah. a while looking at all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say, though, um, when I was personal training, I had some amazing clients. Mm. Like, just people that are just different to me yeah. in a lot of ways, but um, just really... There's some massive high flyers who have yeah. just earned, you know, £400,000 a year or whatever. This was back in the day as well, so probably a lot more now. Uh, a lot more. The guy that really stood out to me was a guy called Rupert. And um, he was 23 stone. And he came and joined me for personal training and said, I want to lose um, £2 for every pound my partner gains while being pregnant. So he, wow. he knew he was overweight. Yeah. He knew he had a problem and that he needed to, you know, to try to sort himself out. Out of all my clients, there's nobody worked as hard as him. Yeah. Big fella, like proper big fella, a lot of fat on him. And um, he ended up getting down to about 19 stone. And I can't... That's a big step. And I can't say mm. that I, that was because of me. Mm. That's because he had in his head, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And uh, he lost all his weight. It looked... 10 times better because of it. Yeah. Felt ten, felt a thousand times better because yeah. of it. I'll sit and talk to, to folk that I've literally just met for well, an I'm, hour. I'm saying, and I'll, and I'll sit yeah. and talk to them. And I've done a lot of travelling when I was younger with the golf. And um, I loved it because you're travelling all over the traveling world. Travelling with the golf? Mm. What, were and you I, a pro I, or something? No, I played for England for <laughs> six years. I was, yeah, I really? was uh, British. I was a British mid amateur champion. Wow! In 2006, and I played in the Open Jesus. in 2002 in the British Open. So, like, I've got like 30,000 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had like the world watching you, probably. Well, there was there was 40,000 people Goodness. at Newfield watching. And oh. The uh, the old bottom was nipping a little bit on oh. the first tee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bit of nerves. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it was cool, and uh, I did it. I was really privileged. I say wow, I came mate. from a. I didn't come from a typical golfing background, so I felt completely privileged. It's um, sort of experiencing um, what I did. 
it's like a middle class sort of sport, yeah. it? you know what I mean? Like people with a bit of money and yeah. And and golf as uh, as a sport now is more accessible for everyone. Golf as a sport to be elite at is still a middle class sport and up. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, when I got when I got to my chance to to achieve something in golf, when I, I got a challenge to a card, I went to European tour school and um I basically couldn't get a sponsor. Oh, right. And um and if your family hasn't got money and you haven't got money and it costs sixty grand a year in expenses oh, to play on the tour, hell. um well then you can't do it and that's just you know, it didn't bother me. It's it's life you Things things don't always work out the way you want them to in life, and um, and when I was twelve, if you'd said to me, listed off all the things I achieved in golf and said this is what you're going to do in golf, I'd have grabbed the hands off. It would have been I'd have said no, I'll never, I'll, I'll never do that in golf. So the the things that I experienced and things I achieved, uh, I, w I wouldn't swap for the world. It was absolutely awesome. Well, what and the fact that it didn't yeah. work out in the end, you know. So what? Uh, unfortunately, it's another uh, life lesson at the moment is that young people don't necessarily get is life isn't always fair. Things don't always work out the way you want them to, but it doesn't really matter what happens in your life. You just got to keep pressing forward and taking as many positives as you can from everything that happens and get and getting on with life. And that's that's what I've always done, Blue. Eh? Do you know, mate? Right? And um, it's inspiring, though, isn't it? Well, me hearing that is inspiring. I mean, like, you know, you've you've uh, had your path of life yeah. and you've learned a lot from it. And, mm -hmm. you know, you're out here now and you're sort of enjoying this sort of stuff. Yeah. But the golf thing, do you ever play golf? I still play. I'm, uh, I'm like Cumbria County captain now, so I, I pick the teams and stuff for that. <laughs> um, but You wouldn't I'm, pick I'm me, still... mate. No. I'm telling you now. On, I wouldn't pick me either now. <laughs> <laughs> this is what was said how my sort of a swing was but it's like <laughs> I looked like I was chopping trees down with an axe <laughs> I mean I could hit a ball you know what I mean yeah. I want too bad it's a good thing about golf is you can you can play at any level and enjoy it um, do you know what I think the best thing about golf is walking <laughs> <laughs> you can probably walk a long way yeah you, you do, do. Right? no no the best thing about golf is that in every single round you're playing golf you always do one shot yeah. that is as good as a pro Exactly. At least one shot. And in golf, it's known as the bringer backer. The bringer backer. The bringer backer shot. It brings you back the next day. <laughs> you can play absolutely useless all day long, and you'll hit one shot, and afterwards. That is true. You'll think, ah, I did hit that no, shot that on the true. 14th, didn't I? So I'm, I'm going to go back tomorrow, and okay. I'm going to try and hit that shot more times. I agree with you, but I've got one person who was, doesn't doesn't go along those lines. <laughs> And uh, this is my mate. He was in the army. Yeah. And this is these are the sort of guy you want on the front line of the army. <laughs> my mate Gary. He got to that point after like having a bad round, you know, like hitting balls all over. <laughs> and like we, you know, we're, we couldn't play golf. You know yeah. what I mean? But um, blue go ahead. But um, it he teed off and he hit this ball and skewed off. And uh, he took his clubs and just snapped them all over his knee <laughs> <laughs> and shoved them in the bin. <laughs> he been, and he walks off, and that were it, and he's never played since, I don't think. <laughs> if I had to choose the type of people we could all be, it would be that person. I, I, would <laughs> I would rather bring all kids up as an absolute animal and then learn to tame them <laughs> as they get older. That's because good, you can't do it the other way around. That's a good concept. But you can't, no, no, you can't I, bring them up really soft and no. then turn them into an animal. Do you know what? You could have them as an animal and then you can tame them as the... Wow, I've never thought of that. So well, that's I'd, I'd much not rather a see kids be wild and, you know, they're a little bit looking out of control when they're little. But, but and being honest, physical and stuff, I, and, then and then just gradually tame them as they get older. Completely think that's brilliant. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm, I'm thinking of all the kids that I, I don't know, have sort of warmed to more. Yeah. The ones that are the sort of crazy ones that just do, they've just got a brain that works a little bit more extreme, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I think, well, I, I would naturally warm to them type of kids as well, the um, the ones that would just try anything. That would be, if I, yeah. you know, the the other week I took, uh, last You've week. you blown my brain with that one, mate. That took is a my good little concept. lad and two of his, it was supposed to be the rest of his uh, football team because they helped coach 
um, his football team with a guy who was the head coach and um, they were all going to come up Scorfell Pike. It was going to be a little thing for them, like a bit of team building. I was going to take them up. And loads of them cried off and it ended up being three of them. <laughs> so it was my little lad and two others, uh, two great little kids and, um, you know, love exploring, love doing stuff a little bit daring. So we went up Brown Tongue Path up the steps, got to the top where it splits off towards Mickledore. Yeah. I had one of the other parents as well. And I said, right, it was a gorgeous day. I said, um, right, we've got a choice now. We can stay up this path, up the tourist path, or we can go up there. And I pointed to Mickledore, you know, it looked awesome. The sun was out and um, broad stand and Scorfell was there. And straight away, all three of them just said, go on that way. <laughs> Let's go that way. And yeah, I said, yeah. it's tough. I said, it's a tough walk up there. It's really steep and loose. And no, we'll, we'll go that way. We'll go that way. And I just thought, that's it. That's that's exactly how kids should be. They should look. They should look at that path, with the tourist path, and think, why would why would I do that when I can go up there? Completely, when I can mate, when yeah. I can climb up through a gully and and it's and it's safe. And I made sure know, they were safe. They were. Yeah. One thing that I would say about situations like that is, when kids have got enthusiasm to do something, so like a lot of kids will sit at home and sometimes they'll be like oh, it'd be really nice to go out and do this. But parents hold them back. Yeah. And I think embrace those moments yeah. and get them out. Just bloody let them do it. Let them do it. Make it, you know, if you've got those sorts of worries, make it as safe as you possibly can for them. Um, but also embrace the fact that life has some risks involved in it. Completely, yeah. And if you want to have any enjoyment or adventure in life, then there has to be some risks involved at yeah. some point. Um, you want the risks to be as small as possible um, and not crazy risks or reckless type of risks. But um, kids love that. I mean, they, they loved going <laughs> up through. I, I went first and I told them just to follow me. And you're in a gully, so no one's going to fall. Um, you might slip a little bit, but you're not going to fall off a, you know, you're it's not going to fall off a crag or anything like that. I'd only take people up that route anyway, because yeah. I, I well prefer it. it it's, it's much more fun. Um, <clears throat> And they absolutely loved it. They really loved it. And we came back down the tourist path. And when we were halfway back down through Hollerstones, they said, oh, I'm chuffed we went up that other way because this would have been so boring coming up here. Talking about that, though, like um, most people will take the path of least resistance. Yeah. And I think that path, to me, is the path I'd never want to take. I never want to be on that path because... No. It, it doesn't lead to anything exciting or, no. you know, any strong memories or anything like that. Whereas least resist, you know, when you're going on the one that's harder work, you know, you feel more, you, you yeah. know, you... You feel more alive. Oh, You'll never absolutely. feel more alive than when you're doing something that's really difficult and, and, and might, yeah. you know, might have the odd risk involved. Well, the thing Managed is, risks, the but, word challenge, Yeah. people do, you know, when they're like, oh, I'm going to do a challenge, but like... It's only a challenge if it's hard work. Yeah. If you can just do it as like, you know, it's easy going, yeah. it's not a challenge. And, no. You know, and I only want to do challenges. Yeah. I, I love doing, I love doing things to try and find out what, where's my limit. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what I, can I, I not do? I haven't found my limit yet. I, I haven't found it yet. I haven't done anything that I haven't been able to do. Some have been very, very difficult and I've struggled through the last you know, a quarter of it or a third yeah. of it, but I've done them all. But <clears throat> I'm constantly, it's a bit of a race against time because I'm 43 now and I'm thinking I can't keep doing that forever. Because at some, at some point, you, you know, when you get in your 50s, <laughs> I'm going to start thinking, well, you can't keep looking for the most extreme thing to do. No, that's true. Um, because your body just now. simply can't, yeah, yeah. You, you don't recover as well, I know. Yeah. Anyway, I am going to open my next beer. So, again, this is a stout, the Honey Berry Stout by North Brewing Co. 9%. Pretty strong, like, isn't it? It is. It, uh, that last one was uh, very nice. I, I mean, enjoyed. This, I enjoyed uh, the taste of that. This, I can feel. Mm. <laughs> I can feel the alcohol. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, let's get another one down me. And you're still on cider for summer. I'm it still on the not cider. not summer, mate. 
Honey belly. I'll tell you what, that is not bad. Have a taste of that, mate. I'm definitely going to have to get myself some of these. North Brewing Company. North Brewing Co, yeah. They've got a actually really cool bar set up. That's really nice there. It's nicer than other. Yeah, I that's, think. That, yeah. that is nice there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they're based in Leeds. They've got um, a few sort of bars sort of set out in Leeds and a couple of other places as well. But they, um, one of the bars is where they brew. So they've got all the vats of you know, beer sort of set up and this nice massive setup. sort of thing. And when you go to the bar itself, you're looking over all the vats. So it's like a really cool place to be. I like so the sound of that. If they're half what this Four is. Four and a half, half. That's half what this is. Yeah. So I've got two of these. How many cans have you got? I've only had two. Well, we've got another two cans of So that. you need to drink all them to be the same alcohol consumption as me. Ah, but if you need to drink one, <laughs> so we've had three each. <laughs> okay, <no. laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. See how you're doing after that. I can that. see newspapers you're still, you're this still morning. still talking all right. Man <laughs> dies falling off crinkle crags <laughs> after being forced to drink alcohol by his mate. <laughs> you, still, you, still, you still sound all right after that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Blue, you legend. As always, time to lay this log. And uh, after having a few drinks and some merry, <laughs> merry chat, we'll see thee at morning. Morning flowers. Well that is not a bad place at all to pitch a tent. As good grass as you can get, seriously. It was just like pitching on a, a bowling green or something like that. But yeah, not a bad morning to wake up. It's been a bit sort of claggy. If I just sort of turn you around this side, the sort of the scarf fells over there, they're just sort of clagged in. But Borfell has, has had a bit of a cloud round it, but it's sort of dissipated now. But it is a beautiful day, it really is. And just hopefully it will uh, keep the cloud at a higher level so I can sort of continue my adventure and still get to see some of these beautiful views. So yeah, anyway, Sai is packing himself up. He's gonna get himself off this mountain and yeah, I'm gonna continue and I'll take you to the top of Bofell. And I'm gonna have a scout around to see if there's any nice other pitches that I might be able to use in the future around this area. Well, we've got the sun there, just sort of trying its best just to show itself. There he is, ready to go. Sorted, mate, eh? Brilliant. Been it, an awesome night, pal. It has been it really an has. absolute pleasure, mate. Yeah. Left hand shake. Yeah, nice one. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll get out another time, definitely. Yeah, I'd love to. It's honestly been absolutely, yeah. So, and look at this for a pitch. I mean, that grass. I've said it already, but yeah, just perfect. Doesn't get any better than that, I don't think. Definitely not, mate. Anyway, I will catch you again soon. Yeah, catch up soon. Yeah. Have a good night tonight. And, and have a, good, a, yeah. a safe walk back, mate. Will do, pal. See you later. Get on, mate. See, See ya. You. See you, bud. Well, back to solo camping. And it is just starting to brighten up a little bit, even though it's still very cloudy, but that sun is trying. 
Anyway, luxury camping as well. I've got some granola and I carried a full litre of milk. So, got my little bowl, got my spoon. Breakfast time. I do love my granola though. Pretty much every day, morning and night. When you carry milk up like this, it means you can have a proper decent cup of tea as well. And that's the order you do it in. Cereal first, tea later, every time. Creature of habit and all that. Oh, here we go. make myself a cup of tea but first of all if you look at my stove now I have had this a lot of years but each one of these sort of spins itself out and holds with friction this one <laughs> is as slack as a wizard's cuff so I need to just try sort of bend that metal a little bit and just sort of get it back in place because sometimes you put your pot on and it wants to sort of spin so the best tool for the job, which is what I always carry with me, is a Swiss Army knife. And I think this is a really good thing to carry just because it's got everything on that hopefully um, will cover everything that you ever need, including a tiny set of pliers. So just enough, hopefully, for me to do a field repair. Just try sort of bend this back. Maybe. <laughs> we'll soon find out. I might not be able to do this. Nope, I can't do it with those. So, yeah, the rubbish, don't bother getting a Swiss Army knife. It doesn't do what you want it to do, does it? <laughs> what I actually need, I think, is some mole grips that I can really clamp on and just get a decent sort of bit of leverage with it. But anyway, time for a cup of tea. That's more important, isn't it? Done a bit of work there so I feel like I need a cup of tea. Tea break. Well, it's all right having some half decent milk with me. <laughs> I say half decent, it's UHT milk for a start, but um, me dad won't touch anything like this. He doesn't even touch any, any milk that's been pasteurised at all. Real milk, straight from cow. <laughs> that is what my dad has, and he won't have anything else but that. Completely, 100% raw. been having a good sort of mosey around this area to see if there's any potential future pitches and I found a couple of really nice ones so I might be bobbing back at some point but it's time really to pack this tent away and get ourselves to the top of Bofell. 
where we're sat at the minute is in like a bit of a bowl and we've got this sort of big outcrop here that is just sort of allowing the wind to pass over the top of us but as soon as you sort of uh, step out the side of this it's bloody windy so i think up there is going to be a bit of a wild one anyway let's get this packed away and skedaddle up there just meandering my way up to the summit of Bofell and I'm currently stood on the Great Slab but look at this it's one immense piece of rock and you can see it sort of sits on probably about a 40 degree angle and it just goes off into nothing and if we look this way just this is all the sort of a side of Bofell which is just an absolutely massive chunk of rock everywhere just awesome absolutely awesome place Anyway, I don't want to be rolling off here, so we'll get ourselves off. Blue's not bothered, he's just chilling. Get on then, Blue, come already waiting for me but well, this is the summit of Bofell 902 meters
Well, there we are. That is Bofell. The summit is just behind me and I'm just crouched down out of the wind for a minute. But what an absolutely awesome adventure this has been. It's been fantastic to uh, meet up with Sai, who is one of my Patreon, and we just had such a good laugh and just nice to meet someone who is as outdoorsy as I am, if not more, because he does get out a hell of a lot into the lakes, just because he lives fairly close by as well, I guess. But yeah, this is what it's all about, just getting out and appreciating all this. So as always, give it a big fat thumbs up because it definitely helps when uh, people like the videos. And if you want to join the Patreon and just become part of that sort of community that I've got going on there, you know, there is these opportunities here and there where we might be able to get out and do something like a camp. You just never know. Anyway, from me and the beautiful blue, blue, that's it. <laughs> we'll see you another time. Take care.